Hey, Donnie. Let me free, girl. I got some good news for you. What's that? It does actually feel less humid, and there are less mosquitoes out oh, there this morning. Well, that is good. Did you make me my coffee? Yeah, it just did. wasn't the same without you. Yeah, I've got it all ready to go for you, all sweet right. little thing. Thank you. You're welcome. So, Donnie, what you doing? Well, I'm sipping my coffee, and I'm kind of looking at my trip in uh, Google Maps. Um, I clicked um, several of the superchargers I have added to favorites, and it just says it just says something like sheets in as a saved place. So I went in and I was trying to rename sheets to be Greensboro Supercharger because when you have a list of favorites and it says sheet 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 sheet, it's not very helpful. So I was trying to rename them. Well, so I pulled up the the individual spot that I location I had saved and something in there and I was reading and it had this thing t view on your timeline and I said timeline what's this so I clicked timeline and it it took a minute and this page shows up and it's got dates across the bottom and a map you know your typical Google map with your route and then it had this Tennessee Missouri uh, box up uh, a little tiny uh, thumbnail of a map with Tennessee uh, outlined and Missouri outlined and it was like I click that and then all of a sudden it shows me a detailed every stop I made how long I drove any picture I took on your phone on my phone for the trip out to Cape, Cape Girardeau and then it was segmented by days across the bat, you know, uh, the second, the third, and the fourth. It showed the hotel, it showed me riding around on my unicycle, it said I went 0.8 miles, and it just called it moving, and it, I was able to update that moving, so I, one of my superchargers, I don't remember which one it was, I was, I rode 0.8 miles on my that would have been Bristol, where you were hunting the bathroom. Right, that probably was. Or Minor, where you went to change your clothes, and it was across the street. Right, so it it showed that, like when I was at the hotel, it, it knew it was a hotel, and it put a little icon, looked like I was sleeping there, and stuff like that. So anyway, I was very impressed. So I said, you know, I made a royal, since it has my map, my uh, the map, and it had it all nice and segmented, I scrolled down to the time segment, where I came into Greensboro on I-40 East from... 52, off of 52, off coming of down from Mount, Mount Airy, Airy, Pilot Mount Airy. That's right, Airy. so I came down from Pilot Mount Airy on 52 into Greensboro, got on 40. Remember, my destination was plugged in to be the Tesla Supercharger, okay, in Greensboro. Well, somehow I blew it, and I ended up going the wrong direction, and... and Marianne, maybe I, I I'll take a screenshot, screenshot and put yeah. it up. That uh, clover leaf tie on steroids oh, yeah. there. So the key thing is, I was able to see where I made my wrong turn or wrong maneuver, and right there before there's this major interchange where um, several forty four twenty one four twenty one and seventy three all come together, and I'm on. It's a very complex clover leaf, and what happens is there's a little fork where you actually want to stay on 40, and because I was used to going 421, because I'm going to be leaving on 421 to go to Siler uh, City direction, uh, that interchange, I must have gotten confused and went the 421 direction and not to 40 because I needed to go another mile on 40 get off supercharge come back but uh, so that's well where I, I assume up. you turned on navigation sounds because I wasn't in the car fussing at you that I couldn't stand it right but and that I definitely had navigation sounds on in fact I had it in sterile uh, stereo right because you had your phone too yeah so uh, the phone was definitely telling me to go 421 because I was going home the um, Tesla navigation was trying to route you to the supercharger. So I suspect that had a little of something to do with the confusion factor. But anyway, I it is a confusing intersection. Part of the problem is I didn't know 
the actual name of the exit uh, that uh, you know it's Guilford Let's... Guilford College Road things like that I didn't know the and that's what the thing is talking about is the supercharger thing is said Hornaday you know, Hornaday or something anyway the point is I do the using the timeline I was very easy uh, able to figure out what I where I screwed up Don needs full self-driving yeah. Just take me to the supercharger. Well, well I may, have, I'm sure. Uh, first of all, I need to say uh, I had made a couple turns really quick right before this. It's like you go through one clover leaf to get off of 52 onto 40, and then bang, you do this clover leaf to go from 40 to 421 to this other interstate 73. So there's like two clover leaves back to back, and they're not five miles apart, there's 500 yards apart. So I literally navigated around, and navigation was keeping up, but I couldn't, you know, I'm trying to merge into traffic, I'm thinking I need to merge into traffic, but, you know, I, if I would just stay in the far right lane and not try to drive. Well, one of those turns over there is a left exit, if yeah, I remember and left, correctly, right. then that'll throw you, up, throw you off every time, too. That's right. So I'm just trying to tell you... Uh, Hopefully I, next time you've sorted it out, you won't miss right, the exit for the right. supercharger. I would tell people if you're coming in on, and especially if you're going to uh, on 40 there, uh, it can be very confusing. Yeah. So Don was saying that he hadn't looked at his Google location timeline in a while. I kind of get right. these updates all the time, and I check my months and months summary. I click right. on it, and I go, look. But he says it looks a lot like Polar Steps. That's right. The only problem with all of these is, is we was really looking for something that was sort of real time with not too much work on Don. Right. And Polar Steps almost accomplishes that, except for when he has no cell service. Right. It's only as good as your cell service as far as you putting up an update, especially if you want to put up a video clip instead of a picture. Right. The thing about uh, Polar Steps that would be if I stop, and I'm at a place for 10 minutes or more, maybe it should just save a marker there. Just yeah. drop a pin. Right. And then you know, if I keep moving... You can always it, delete the pin if you don't want to count right. that. Right. Yep. But to be able to go back and drop a pin accurately, what time I was actually there... You need a photo on your phone. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's right. Marianne has found out the photos are very helpful because they got GPS and from, but then to tell you the duration. Right. And uh, so I would tell you that that's uh, uh, something about Polar Steps where the timeline is effectively, every time you stop, it says, well, you were driving up to this point and then you stopped here for a while. What were you, what was your activity? Right. At, at that, and I put supercharging. Right. Well, if we were traveling in a gasoline powered car, People wouldn't care so much that you stop, except for oh, yeah, you no. stopped in Bristol, Tennessee and put gas in the car. It was this many gallons, this price per gallon, and it cost me this much. Have a nice day. Right. But from but people are interested in how long you are at the super, I'm not going to use the word stuck. Right. How long you're stopped at the supercharger, how long, how much did you put in? And then there's the how much did you need to put in versus the how much did you mm. really put in? And, you know, from an EV point of view, people care a little bit more still about those details. It'd be different if you were in an ICE car. Right. Well, and, and the other thing is um, until Google, like, automatic, he has an electric car thing and he shows you the charging things. But he doesn't root you through those charts. Google won't root you. In other words, if you're taking a trip on an electric car, uh, Google will show you the charging stations. But when you Google picks its map, best as I can tell, and it, God Lord, if I am wrong, somebody tell me, it won't plan the trip to go by charging stops. Right. It needs a thing up at the top where it shows walking public transportation, train, car. Electric it needs car. electric car up there. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, you know, just to say from a person watching your trip at home, I had typed in Nashville supercharger and thank God Google understands where all the superchargers that's are right. and that that's a Tesla thing now. And it that's does. Right. It does. But it picked one in Nashville. It didn't tell me there were essentially three, three near in Nashville. Nashville. Yeah. So, so you knew because you were in the car that you had these other options. But as a person at home, I had no clue. I would have had to have gone out to Ruby or gone to the Tesla right. supercharger map on my computer or something else to see 
Right. So that would be like a fourth thing on my ultimate dream Tesla console. Right. I need the Tesla supercharger map up. I need to be able to see all of them at, within like a hundred mile or 200 mile radius of where you are. Right. Yeah, without having to, you know, I'm talking about oh, being on the computer. On the computer. Not yeah. in the car. Right, my, on, my on, on the computer, computer. console has right. real time doors open, windows open, right. front I open, super Yeah, my real time on the browser console, it right. has one window that has real time what the car's doing, how fast you're driving, right. if you're if the front's open, whether or not you're supercharging, all the, right. what your current location, that right. kind of thing. Then another block has the Tesla supercharger network. So I can see any supercharger within like a 300 mile radius of where you are. And I can right. zoom into however many miles I want it to show me like 25 right. or 75. And then it's got the geeky details from Tesla Fi of your last drive, your right. last supercharge, your daily summary, that kind of thing. And then, oh, by the way, I want to follow you on Google location services because it's the best real time visual on a map of where you are so if my console my my dream console now has four right. four window panes well i'm clicking on my computer and see if google has uh, if tesla has fixed this um they still so I'm, you can get the app up but it doesn't or it, it used to work folks i actually opened the ticket probably two years ago one of the the early whenever android's been running on a chromebook for two or three years yeah if you can't tell don's got the tesla app up in chrome which chrome lets you do that and he can't type in his user id and password because it's almost all the way off the screen and right. there's no way to move that window it's not centered right. properly so what i'm saying is is that you know i could actually run the google app on my chromebook but it doesn't format right now i did send a ticket in to Tesla, Tesla at the I time got a res some kind of response and I don't remember I can go back and find well it. I guess you're gonna go submit a new one yeah the point is I think what they're doing there's n this is a problem I've wrote Android apps before um, you basically there isn't a, a real good way to dynamically size the screen they sort of give you some choices this kind of screen this kind of screen and that kind of screen and that's what most people choose. Uh, um, and so Android, under the cover, when you uh, do your app, build your app, it adds in all the control, that for those types of screen layouts and presentations. Dynamically figuring out the size of the screen, how big the window, the fonts, and all those gory details. You used to have to do that on when you wrote, back in the days when I wrote for OS2, Presentation Manager, you could you had to calculate not in pixels but uh, they had a, another term for basic and it was incredibly difficult to do all that math in your software to, so that if somebody had a high resolution screen the box wasn't microscopically small right and if you had a low resolution screen the box hung off the screen you you could um, you would actually have to c control the size of the box based on the percentage of the screen and uh, they got rid of the percentage and then you had to do all that math yourself and I don't think they've ever added the percentage because that's what you need to do you need to build, draw a box percentage of the screen so Tesla, it shows up Tesla you I'm got sorry. really talented programmers out there Don he'd like to come fix it yeah, for you yeah right he'd like to come fix it I'm sure I'm sure he could fix it yes thank you so Tux is doing good this morning. He's happy. I've had him in the house. I sat on the floor with him and did a brush rub down. I mean, God, he was just in heaven. He was purring. He was very happy. Um, but he's feeling so good. He's wanting to be more mobile today. So Mama's a little stressed trying to keep up with his location. He's not settling down by the back door like he did yesterday. No luck on catching anything in the crate last night. That's unfortunate. Um, obviously, we're going to keep on trying. So, um, um, you know, now that uh, Ruby and Jules both have uh, Sentry and dash cam capabilities, I'm getting with the program. I know some people have had it for a while. And, um, you know, I'm a big look at stuff on the computer. I get that you can look at uh, the dash cam viewer now in the car, and that's great. But that won't help me show you guys something in the video unless I want to 
just film the screen with the vlogging camera, which is not really good quality. So anyway, I installed this SentryCam viewer. There's a couple of other ones out here too, but I installed this one on my MacBook, which is where I build our videos, which is where I'm going to want to see stuff. And um, I'm pretty impressed with it. I got to tell you, uh, this is some footage yesterday that Don had asked me to look at. I'm going to just back it up a little bit here. Um, it's really close to the house. He had an issue. He was passing a basically a car hauler in the left lane. And Jules did a little, well, he called it a dive to the left a little bit. I see her wiggle in the lane. You know, it never looks as bad on the dash cam as it feels to the driver. Because Don's looked at a couple clips I've shown him over the past few years. And it's like, yeah, I get that. But well, the dash cams, they tend to be make everything look farther away. Anyway, I'm going to roll this video and I'm going to play it. And this is that new app I installed. Um, it kind of hung up on me. I wonder if that's because I'm recording. So let me do the clip before. Here we go. It's playing properly now. And you can see this. You can see very clearly. I'll play it one more time for you after it completes here. Look at the upper left hand corner um focus focus on the upper left hand corner right here you're going to see jules dip a little bit it wasn't a bad dip and don said the thing that got him the most was not that she moved away from the truck a little bit but that um over here in the upper right pane you can see there's a he said it was some sort of a ford pickup truck a large size truck you can tell he had to brake because jules braked and it looks like he's way far away, but he's really not. That's the perspective of that rear camera. So let me hit pause here. And then the thing that's really cool about this is that you can do an export and it will let you save a file. And I picked downloads a minute ago. I've already saved it one time. So I'm going to come over here to Finder and I'm going to click on it. And it saved, it compiled a movie of the four clips together. So if I wanted to put it in the video for you guys, I would probably put this in because it's pretty decent quality and it's big enough for you to see. And I realize it's not 16 by nine format, but the captured screens, you know, they're not conducive to that. So, and now I have a little century looking eyeball, a how sort of, oh God, I didn't say that because you know, that's copyrighted, but we all know it's how we all know it is because it was for a while. <laughs> and, um, so I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty happy with that. What got me looking at this was all of Don's talk about the Google location services and timeline stuff. And the fact that, um, I wanted to, uh, I was still thinking about my ultimate dream Tesla trip monitoring console. And then another little thing I wanted to show you, if I come in here, I've got, um, I have several clips. This was the clip where Don's pulling into the driveway that he told me he wanted to view. Let's see where we are. Next clip, next, uh, maybe last clip, next clip. Yeah, here's Don coming into the driveway and there was a hawk here and you can't see the hawk. He wanted to capture the hawk for me. The hawk flew that must have had some sort of a thing. But you can definitely see as we come down here that um, there's going to be deer run across the driveway. Look again up here in the front view. and You can clearly see the deer run across the road. So I guess I'm going to export this one, which I have not done yet. Um, probably should deer driveway give it a better name and save that and i would like original if i if there's any chance i would put it in today's video i want the best resolution possible we weren't impressed with the front camera as the speckled light right when don came into the driveway um it really doesn't look all that great quality but um yeah, so now I have, again, this big view and watch the upper left-hand corner as Don's coming into the driveway. You guys have seen this before. Pauses so the hawk can fly off, which we cannot see because it's really broke up over here right now. That shadowy, speckled, you know, partial shade there it just doesn't do good things for that front camera. And there come the deer. There were at least two that went across. So anyway, I think this is pretty cool how the software is um, building 
uh, that video for me that I can that I can do if we we save something and we say it's good. The only thing I wasn't able to get to work was I had to specify when I brought up the app um, the folder and uh, for the viewer and it made me put the thumb drive back in. I had the I had the folders copied to Finder um, over here from yesterday. I had them copied. Here's the two sort by kind. Um, sort by name. Oh, I moved them out now. I had the two folders, uh, these two folders on my hard drive. And I tried to point that app at these folders that I had copied off the thumb drive from yesterday. And um, it didn't like that. So I wonder now if I say open in Finder and I come over here to this Tesla Cam folder. This is not the thumb drive, it's just on my hard drive. And I select one of these. Um, yeah, it lets me go there to look at the source files from the app, but it still doesn't let me say that's the folder where the Tesla files are. So I would prefer to just say, oh, there's my save clips from today. I'm going to copy them to this Tesla cam folder. They've got a date on them. I'll do something with them later. Take the thumb drive back out of my computer. But right now I kind of got to leave the thumb drive in there. Go, you know, right now create the movie I want. And then I can pull the thumb drive out. I don't like the thing sticking out the side of my computer. I'd rather just copy the folder over, which takes like, you know, 10 seconds. And then when I'm editing later that night, deal with it. So. Anyway, you got an idea. Here's a glimpse of my uh, Google timeline from Tuesday of this past week. And this was the day um, that I um, made the loop around South Park and the environmental park in our house doing the 2020.36 uh, speed limit reading test. And uh, I note here that I actually like was on Judd Parkway and then turned right on to Main Street to come down to Wagstaff. And that, you know, it kind of shows me going through the middle of a field, which I didn't, or middle of a community, which obviously I didn't do. But still, it does get the gist of the stuff that I made. And I didn't take any pictures that day with my phone except for these pictures of R2-D2. So it knew I was home here and what I was up to while I was there because it had those pictures. But like when I was over at South Park, the picture I took of that really interesting bus, I took it with the vlogging camera. So um, if you want this to look really good, if, you're, if you have Google location, Google location history, history turned on, and you take pictures on your phone and you allow it to collect the GPS location of your pictures, it will build you this timeline. It's a little bit different. Don and I also share our lo exact location and Johnny too with each other. So we see each other show up on the map. Normally we're at home and our little face shows up at the home spot, but um, we do that. But that's separate. The thing that draws the timeline is Google location history and then the photos on your phone having GPS turned on. Obviously, we're not too paranoid about Google knowing where we are. I get it. Some people don't like that, but um, that's okay with us. And this is kind of this is kind of neat. Um, it did ask me, and I already did it. Where was I over here on this South Park one? And uh, it knows about the park and ride, the rec the community center itself, I guess maybe the ball field or something you can see as I'm moving over here. South Park's pretty big. Um, even with Tesla Fi, we sort of have trouble telling it exactly where we are at South Park. I tried to make Tesla Fi just know the whole darn thing. We don't need to differentiate which part of South Park I'm in. Um, but anyway, this is cool. Don and I like it. So we had a viewer today. Ask us, what did Don do to protect the front of Jules from bugs during his road trip? Right. And uh, so we answered him, but I knew you, that some of the rest of you might be interested. Plus, from time to time, people are always asking Don what products is he using, which it varies over time. And there's not just one good product, but there's several good products out there for various right. parts of the cleaning. So 
he'll tell you if something's not good, but there might be three or four that, that he likes. Yes. Uh, yeah, I need to say, obviously, I've washed my car from the time I've ever had them. Let's see, I'm uh, 63. Uh, for 20, 40 years, I've been washing more, more cars and trying to keep them from my first hot rod till now. Anyway, my point is I've, I, I'm not a professional car dealer, so I'm just an in of one my experience i used to like new finish back in the 80s 70s and 80s i used new finish and i loved it it went on easy protected the car don't use new finish now because clear coats it actually has an abrasive in new finish uh so don't use new finish okay now but I, it's a great product if you got an old car that doesn't have a clear coat all right uh it'll actually pull the color out if your paint fades use new finish but if your brand new car don't use new finish so they've got all this modern technology. I found this to work really well, go on really well. It's got two, we've washed Jules ex three times three now, times. including yesterday's cleanup from the trip. Yesterday. So the day after we got Jules, I followed the directions for the first time application on this Meguiar's Hybrid Ceramic Wax. Turtle Wax makes a very similar product and the project Farm Project or Project Farm YouTube channel tested these, it, and a bunch of other ones and rated the Turtle Wax better than this. This was good. The Turtle Wax was better. So It was a fascinating video, and I'm saying that, and I'm a girl that doesn't usually clean right. the car. So I recommend you go to the, uh, the Project Farm and watch that video. But this was a okay or good product. There was one better. These are very inexpensive. I think I paid, like, believe it or not, I think I paid like $10 for this. It's a little bit more expensive now. It's like 15 Yeah. Right, which is not bad. Well, the may, your walk-in Walmart, Amazon order may vary. That's right. So look around. Uh, but um, I think if you buy anybody's brand name, uh, Meguiar's, um, Turtle Wax, uh, you know all these uh, car companies. Uh, the they, chemical uh, guys. Uh, yeah. The, the, I think Jay all Leno. of them are going to be good. Yeah. None of them are going to be bad. So anyway, my point is we, we've washed it three times. The first time I followed the directions, that was the day after we bought Jules. So she was, you know, we washed it really good with the, the uh, uh, washing stuff. And I put this on per the directions, which are different for the first time. Then about a week and a half ago, I washed it for this Jules for the second time. And I did follow the second process because I wanted to build up. You probably last six months. So that second time I put it on really was, you know, just courtesy for me you know I wanted to build it up all right now so I I'm thinking these things are working pretty well it gives a nice shine it goes on easy it is not PPF so this I think had a lot to do with why the bugs on my recent trip to Cape Girardeau the bugs come off real easy but I did something else for years before all these fancy waxes like on my GMC I used to spray silicone before a trip. I wouldn't even care. I mean, it might even still be dirty. I don't mean buggy, but you know, my cars don't get like grimy. But you know, it would be little dust. A little dust, and I didn't have time to wash it and do anything. I just grab a can of silicone spray. This is cheap. You get them at Walmart. Again, inexpensive stuff. And I would just spray the front of the right over the <clears throat> dirt and all uh, you know if it was clean it would have been better but spray it do not do it on the garage floor yeah it'll stay slick for six months right you can't get it yeah. off the the so, coin floor we have we were slipping and sliding I, on yeah. it don't ever do it in the don't garage do so do it outside and this just you don't have to wait for it to dry you don't don't rub it now it's gonna this is not a car polish so when you spray your car it's gonna look Dull. 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 It looks dull. The paint looked a little dull with looks that on there. That's right. And you did that right before we took Ruby on her first trip to the Blue Ridge Parkway. That's right. We did that because that was going to be a biggest trip for us. And right. we were driving in the mountains and at night when the bugs are out and all that good stuff. And you did that then. And so I know it went on and off the front of Ruby, no problem. Right. And that silicone basically stays there. Maybe you'd have to reapply it. You know, just throw it in the back of your car in case it rains because it's going to wash off. Remember, it's a lubricant. It's 100% silicone. It's the lubricant. It's but the whole point is, this 
what's there, those bugs, they don't stick well to silicone. Silicone, but yeah. the, it's going to wash off on the trip. But it's cheap, so it, you can reapply it. And again, the difference between a dull, non-shiny surface and a thousand miles of bugs. Trust me, the dull you won't even notice. Okay. Right. I right. agree. All right. So now, fast forward. Fast forward. <laughs> um, the Tesla Ranger. Ranger mobile guy, we had a window squeak. Yep. And we, that's a common complaint in Teslas. And I bet it's a common complaint in some other vehicles right, that have right. the window moving when the door opens and closes because it's not just Tesla. Right. He recommended this spray on wax. It's 100% carnauba wax. Somehow they suspended it in in water. I don't know how they made it liquid because, you know, normal carbon loops would be right, at right, room right. temperature would be hard. Uh, anyway, my point is they've done something to get it liquefied. So we've been, I've been spraying this on the window to keep the squeak and it does take care of the squeak. The squeak's worse in the winter when the humidity is lower right. and there's more friction in the winter. So in the summer we don't tend to notice it, but in the winter if your window is squeaking this stuff is... Yeah, but the Project Farm guy tested it, used this and uh, and when he compared it to the ceramic stuff, he had a piece of, and it was amazing how well this spray-on carnauba wax, or the carnauba wax worked. It did a really good job. It just doesn't last very long. In other words, when you wash your car a couple times, it's gone. So, after seeing that, I said, well, you know, I don't like the silicone because it's dull. But this isn't dull. Right, so, it looks really pretty. Nice. So my recommendation now is, you know, you, you wash and wax your car uh, using whatever product you would like. Between washings, I mean, between waxing sessions, you sh you can spray this on, okay? And it'll, you know, after you wash your car, you spray this on and it'll add a little bit more protection. It's inexpensive. It lasts a long time. It goes on super easy. This is not dry to a haze and buff. Right. Just There's no on. muscle required here yeah, really. You just wipe this on. Just be gentle with the microfiber. Yeah, it just don't put out. any pressure with the microfiber. But this is effectively in place of the silicone. This is good for all the time because I didn't know about this. I had used the silicone before a trip. So now I'm just, in fact, I just sprayed the front Right. Of he just redid the front of Jules with it and after he washed it right before the trip, which was Sunday, the next morning he just happened to have put some on the front so when he went to leave which was kind of you know wasn't planned that right. oh yes jack has passed i need to leave for right. the funeral he didn't have to do anything else because he'd already done stuff yeah so if i had not had this i would have went to my before that long trip where i knew i was going to hit bugs i would have sprayed the front of jewels with the silicone but since this was on there i said i'm just going to try it and now I've taken a trip of 1,600 miles yeah. out there and back, got back, the bugs wiped off, no problem, left no, well now there may be dents or scratches caused by rock chips. This is not a, right. this just keeps the bugs from sticking and they come off real easy when you wash. Now I still had to, they didn't just disappear, I still had to take my rag and, and hit it a little bit, but I didn't have to resort to fingernail scrubbing and, and anything else. They just kind of came right off. And this is white and you can see it really did, all the bugs did come off. So I would say this stuff on, maybe the ceramic coat, uh, hybrid ceramic is good enough by itself. I don't know. But certainly a little bit of protection and carnauba wax, you know, has been around for forever. So, I mean, you know what it does. And, and I would tell you this stuff is easy. And so I would recommend Get you a bottle of this after you wash your car every time when the car is nice and clean. Spray this on because this shines. You can't get this to shine. This when you put this on. Well, once you. But the thing about that is, if you have that can and you're leaving, it's two minutes after you pull the car out of the garage to spray and go. That's right. So it does have that advantage. Yeah. No wiping required. Right. Like you said, the car might didn't have to be perfectly clean. You're not rubbing on it. You're just spraying it. There's no rub, so it no, does have its benefits. And, no, and as far as I know, there's been no bug invented that can stick to silicone. <laughs> so I want to add um, two things. Number one, when Don uses the power washer, the setting, the nozzle he uses on the paint is way less um, uh, powerful. I, I, I use a little fan. A little fan nozzle on the on the paint, and then he 
sometimes switches to a more directed nozzle for the wheels only. That's right. So both. when you see Don with the pressure washer, yes, it's a little bit more pressure than just a garden hose with oh, a sprayer. Yeah. But it's not, he's very careful about which nozzle he uses on the car. That's right. Um, so he was not really trying to get the bugs off, per se, with the pressure washer with any really fine jet. It was a fan jet, and it just was wetting stuff down. And then Right, well, it's, it's a strong jet, but it isn't the same as that jet, that really zero degree, you know, it's like a laser beam almost. It, you know, it, it, it's a two-inch stripe, so it spreads out. The, the the volume over a couple inches which is makes it quicker because the jet you get lines if you ever washed a car it's real dirty with a power washer or cleaned your deck and you're using the yeah jet, you mm -hmm. with the lines. deck people have certainly seen the gray coming off a of treated wood with uh, probably a power a pressure washer if you use the fan then you it's less likely because you'll be able to get all the spots a little bit better uh, it's like a wide paintbrush versus a metal paintbrush. Right, right, right. So, as a woman who has had to deal with bugs on the front of her own car and not had, at certain times in her life, a man to help get the bugs off, okay? My technique, and it's perfectly good. I would, if Don hadn't been home and I had taken jewels and it was all buggy, I would have gotten a white towel and I would have totally soaked it in warm water or even hottish water, and I would have simply laid the white towel or a couple of white towels on the hood, and I would have gone away for 15 or 20 minutes. Right. And the water would have rehydrated the bugs, yep. and then the bugs would have come off. And if I did it one time and there was still a little bit stuck, I would have done it a second time after I did a very gentle wipe down there. I, that works really... The only problem with that technique is getting the towel to stay adhering to the car but i would say with the way the tesla you know you could put like a piece of cardboard on the other side of the of the towel just to kind of try to press it hold it up there because the bugs will rehydrate they it's will. probably the same thing as spraying it with the hose even and then just waiting 15 minutes and coming back they're going to be looser right. so don't you don't got to try to fight off these dried on for days in the sun at 70 mile per hour bugs rehydrate them with some water Right. And then they're going to come off easier. That's just the girl that, having to clean her own car tip about how to... Because right. I've done that to the van. I have literally laid towels across the front of my van, let them sit there, and then come back and dealt with the bugs. That's right. And that's certainly... I usually wet it down and then go spray the rest of the car and come back and hit it. So it, it soaks for a couple minutes to try to... Yep. Really, I, I agree with that. So the switch to fix the... Uh, back the backyard lights came while Don was gone and he's putting it in. I am uh, going to do bag seven for R2-D2. So foot number one is built. You might remember bag seven, step seven, is to build the two feet to attach to the legs, arms, whatever you want to call them. There was one little tiny pin that goes in here to keep this thing from coming out. And my finger and my nail were too big to place it so it just happens Don's tools are still sitting here and I very gently used the needle and nose pliers to help and it worked great. Now I get to repeat. I have to build the other foot. It'll be nearly identical. Slate's on the bench after a little romp in the woods. She's eight and resting. Um, I had a little, just a little trouble getting Tux to settle down near the back door this morning, but not too much. And he's pretty much moved around within a six foot space all afternoon. So this uh, red car here, this is the Tour de France. That is the new Skoda electric car. Uh, it was especially prepared for the Tour de France this year so that's the one that they uh, just revealed this week 
uh, uh, in Europe. Well, that's great to not have a gasoline-powered car with exhaust if it's going to be that close to the bikers. I mean, imagine the advantages of having an electric car in this situation where people are not having to breathe in exhaust fumes. Right. I have watched the Tour de France a, a, a lot, well, semi-live or whatever you want to call this, where you get stuff like this for 15 years or more. And I have wondered for the last five years why they didn't do electric cars. And I... I think this is, and I've always watched these when they talk about the starting and stuff, and they've never mentioned electric cars until this is the first time the word electric car. And he made a point to say it was special electric car just for the Tour de France. Maybe the sunroof so they can hand things oh, in and out I'm of sure. it, or the the decals on it, or... Well, well yeah, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure it's got some special, special yeah. But, but it's still probably that new Skoda that they're just announced. Yeah, way cool. It's make bacon day. You know what that means we're having for dinner, especially since Johnny's not here since eggs aren't his favorite thing. We were making uh, bacon in the convection bake oven on the cookie sheet again. So much easier than the other way. Yeah. I was out of bacon grease, so it was a bacon emergency. Yeah. Don and I are going Saturday night date night at Home Depot. That's right. Saturday night is date night. That's what <laughs> Saturday night is. And so, you know, the go-to place for dating, Home Depot. <laughs> Uh, I let it get away with that mostly. Yeah, well, I would really, really take you to Dairy Queen, but then get you all nice and sweet. But uh, it's like it doesn't work that way. If you say it one more time, we're yeah, going. Yeah. But I had a big dinner tonight. She fed me really good. I must have had like six pieces of bacon, four sausages, three eggs. Oh, it was oh man, to die for. So I'm gonna turn green light time on for dawn. So Don's in traffic or cruise control. She's doing this creep forward. She stopped back there. And she and went creep forward. forward. Slowly, the line. So she must see the line. So when the light turns green, she ought to chime at him. And there's nobody behind me so we can relax. She did not tell you. Oh, she, she did, but she was late. Wah. Well, the guy behind you would have honked the horn if he, you it's know, possible. that was two or three seconds there. God it's forbid possible. that you not yeah. move quicker. Well, that's why I said I looked in the mirror and there was nobody behind. So I was just going to sit there until... Your speed. Uh, 25, 25 and you're doing 38 and it's in town. Well, I didn't know it was this. I'm going back to my point. I want this silly thing to adjust my traffic aware cruise control to the five no more than five over the speed limit i don't care if it knows i don't want to go over i'll put my foot on the accelerator if i want to go over don't automatically go over right so there's a 25 mile per hour sign coming up here on the right do we get another animation here with jewel surely we do there it is yeah it actually said 20 i could read it 25. said 25 yeah it was big enough to read i agree with no, that i'm slowing down here particularly this is yeah, people party central. Back it out. People been drinking at the bar over here. Yeah, the bar. Oh, I mean, we can't call it a bar, bar right now because the they're not a lot. The restaurant. Food. They're serving food. <laughs> Those people up there at the bar, they're eating food. Right. It is a family place, oh, but they serve. Here? Yeah, That's they have a new little. I don't know what you call that, but it's like a little outdoor platform where you can have alcohol too. Well, that's good in COVID time, except for North Carolina, it's really hot. Right. Well, it'll be good in the winter time here. It won't be too cold to be up there. They probably have one of those little fire pit things too. Yeah. So uh, before I started recording, Jules did time twice in downtown Fuquay um, when there wasn't a lead car and he was not in traffic aware cruise control oh, yet he was traffic aware cruise control and when the light turned green she did chime twice and i would say that in jules as well as ruby the green light chime is much more mellow than the your speeding chime I although i think it's the exact same chime maybe i i probably would have used a little different sound i assume they can make this they have a wide range of sounds they can choose here so we're coming into Walmart the back way. Don took me to play Pogo through downtown, which is <clears throat> why I missed those first two chimes. Right. I was spitting poke. I was spitting poke stops. 
So Don put the, the tire black on right before we pulled out of the driveway. Yeah. Looks good. You know, he likes to do that the next day after he washes, so the car is 100% dry. Don got me a new chair. They had the oversized um, yeah. chairs at a pretty good price, so we grabbed it. We got one for him last year. Now I've got one. Yeah. And uh, they got a good selection of mums and not flowering, which is the way you want to buy them. They're ready to bud, but they haven't actually opened up yet. Wow, those are Rubbermaid, too. Yeah, they, this, I highly recommend this plastic or whatever this reinforced stuff is, resin. This stuff is, I've got a, my little trailer I pull behind my riding lawnmower. Tractor, uh, it's, it's made out of this stuff and it's a rubber made also. And it also has a full steel axle. You see the diameter of the axle. Yeah. It goes all the way across and it's captured in the same stuff. So it's very strong. Uh, you can put a lot of weight in these things without damaging them. Yeah, it's a pretty, yeah. It'll outlast most people. <laughs> no price on it that I saw. Oh, it's probably 150 bucks. Oh, yeah. Well, isn't that the ultimate in? Ah. Yeah, well, if I didn't already have... Three of them. Yeah, I would get... <laughs> this would be the one. Wow. Certainly be on my shopping list here. That's nice. How much is that? 164. Yeah, it doesn't seem bad. Well, I guess if you're going to get one for your lifetime, like you said, yeah. I think every house needs a hand truck. We certainly, the one like you have over here, this green one is 52. Yeah. And then yeah. they have this small job for 34.98. Don't break your back. Things are long. You need the extra length. Yeah. Buy the taller one if you can't afford the Mamba Jamba. Well, I have to say, that's uh, impressive. Pretty sweet. Yeah. They've come a long way in re-engineering that. Yeah, absolutely. I like that big pot. It's only $90. Only $90. For resin, it's really heavy. I like it. Big Clive. Big Clive is taking these apart. Well, more and more by like that. It's the same concept. This actually is LED. Just hundreds and hundreds of little bitty So we heard that um, Home Depot and Ego are parting ways. One of our friend, local friends told us that. And I would say that uh, this lawnmower is $50 off. So we were told stuff was marked down and not that we need anything, but of course we had to come check that out because need and want are two different, you know, things. What has need or want ever had to do with us all purchasing decisions? Well, for me anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Tool only. And uh, so that gives you an idea. So this backpack blower is a good deal. You're basically buying a seven and a half hour seven and a half amp hour battery but getting the blower for free yeah. from what the price was before 2.99 is i know it's still a lot but if you have a large yard you want the backpack otherwise you can just get right. the regular blower well the truth is you almost got to have both yeah so the 2.5 amp hour battery is 100 bucks so you can see where the seven amp hour battery would be getting up there I don't see a seven amp hour battery for sale here, but. So we have a date in October for JB to come visit and on the list this fall is to paint those metal cabinets. Right, and I think we're just gonna use spray paint. Yep. See what this requires underneath it. Yeah, we're looking at this Rust-Oleum high performance. Enamel. Yeah, well I guess they only have one can of red right now anyway, but it's a uh, $1.20 off if you buy six cans and we could easily need six cans, so. The things Don looks at on clearance at Home Depot, LED tubes. He was really surprised this, this metal case is heavy. The, the tubes aren't going to be heavy, but the metal case is heavy. I dare you to say that to me again. What? How do you tell the difference between a Buick and an Oldsmobile? Count the letters. I thought it was a Buick. It's a Buick. I counted the letters. Oh, okay. So you tried to tell me I was wrong, but I was right. Well, see, what, 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 uh, 
It's right. pretty. I it's like it. Mind. Right. And the point is, it is a Buick, but it doesn't. The reason I didn't think it was a Buick when I saw it because it has no side ports. I like it. Let's use the very large trunk to convert it to electric and put batteries in it. Yeah. I mean, there's no ex there's no excuse except for money yeah. on those old cars that have those super huge trunks. Fuel and plus, uh, practicing social distancing. That's right. This Jag over here is a little close to be practicing uh, split lining. Split lining works better when you actually park and walk. <laughs> or if you park up here so far away, you don't even have to split the line. Yeah, we gotta split the line. I told Don we needed to show you guys that he had his... Um, uh, jack pads. Uh, the, that's the U UMC Universal Mobile Charger. That's the tire pump plus tire tools, just spare rags. Uh, some sardines emergency and, rations and, yeah. <laughs> and somewhere in here it may be this is just for when I shop yeah there it is the vest the vest a safety so vest. where's your plug and your plug stuff plug kits in is with in the, with, with the, the air compressor yeah. yeah so Don did have a few emergency supplies and this little shelf area really comes in handy yeah, for does. that and I'm really liking the floor mats there yeah we love them I keep on I recommending them yeah. on the forum Yep. Max Spider's good if you really like that design on those Max Spider ones, but these are I, these I, are awesome. I lifted I lifted this up because I kept my laptop case down. Right. Here. Yep. Yep. Constantly on the trip, and I never had to fool with the mats. Mats. They stay right. In place. Guess I should get my stuff back out. I'll sit down in the front and be going, "Where's my phone?" Wouldn't be a shopping trip with me if we didn't have to locate my phone at least. You're one not time. eligible to give blood, but they're calling your name down here. Yeah, that's right. And they finished the uh, paving. It's not dirt anymore. All right, Walmart. I'm waiting for some clearance prices. I'm waiting for you to need to get rid of these. Walmart has in the Christmas themed advent calendar special Lego stuff. There's a city, a friend's. A Harry Potter, several to choose from this year. That is such a fun purchase there. Right. We'll get a thing of cat can cardboard to put under the plant. We can't have Jules getting dirty now. Yeah, dirty. Right, that would be upsetting. Tell you what, it's a good thing there's a lot of space in Jules back there in the back because that's a lot of stuff to fit in the Y. Not done yet. Well, this is true. I may put several more things in. Oh, well, nobody else is paying attention either, but you're right. Well, the ladies of Fuqua Verena Uncensored, they say they're taking their kids trick-or-treating this year no matter what. I ha I'm going to not have an opinion on that. I'm just telling you what I heard. I think I messed up letting him come inside because now he knows how much a thing of heavy whipping cream costs. You know you can buy a shrub for what you can buy a thing of heavy whipping cream. Well, the shrub was on clearance, but... <laughs> Is he going to do it again? Because he's been revving that engine over there like it's a big deal. Oh, I'm sure he's going to do it again, sweetie. Here it comes. Here we go. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Told you. Let's go to the UK. So, will Jules chime? Well, if she was going to, she didn't do it quick enough. So, when we turned on the Wagstaff, we had a 35 mile per hour speed limit, but just like with Ruby, it went away very short ways down the road. We're fixing to head into the S curve. And as I showed yesterday with Ruby, she won't pick up a known speed limit until we're out of city limits and she sees that first 45 mile per hour sign. So I just was confirming the behavior was the same in Jules as it was in Ruby.